Hello beautiful people, it's your girl Sheree B Chicago here with another video. In this video, I'm going to highlight a beautiful woman doing beautiful things in Chicago. And before I get into that video, I would like for you to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you can get more notifications about me dropping another video in case you like content about how we can better the community right here in the Chicago area. Okay, now let's get into the video. All right, you guys, how, do you, how did y'all like the intro? I, I'm trying something a little different, okay? I don't know. I've been watching some of the content creators out here. As you can see, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. No, I'm not looking at the camera. And uh, if you follow the lead attorney, then you know, okay, that um this is definitely something that that, that uh, uh, is different. Like, we don't. I don't know about looking in the camera, but anyway, let's get into the video. Now, this particular video, um, I, I, I felt the need to do this. I really did. I felt it necessary. The minute I heard about this woman, I was like, oh, oh, no, I, I, I got to help. I have to meet and I have to talk about this woman and get people informed. OK, um, I'm talking about Miss Alita Clark best known as Inglewood Barbie. Now, who is Inglewood Barbie? Inglewood Barbie, who was in the community in the south side of Chicago from the Inglewood area. If you're familiar with the Inglewood area in Chicago, it is not one of the prettiest and best neighborhoods. It's killings and shootings all the time. I mean that, seriously. And um, I'm no stranger to that because I'm from the South Shore neighborhood, right? And anybody who's familiar with the South Shore neighborhood, it's pretty much the same. I remember there used to be an argument on who's worse, South Shore or Inglewood, right? But this is, the, the thing is, um, I had to highlight this woman because she is doing amazing things. She has two organizations. One is called No Hugs, No Slugs, and another one is Club 51. So they both have their, have their, um, their reasons and and then their their the things of why she does what she does. Hugs no slugs is about violence, and Club Fifty One is about feeding the homeless. Homeless because she likes to say that they're her friends. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get into this clip. She's appeared on the Steve Harvey Show. She's been on Windy City Live. The clip that I'm about to show now, she was on later with Leon. Anybody who's familiar with Leon, Leon is a radio host in the Chicago area for one of the most uh, major hip hop and R&B radio stations, WGCI. Now, I'm going to show this clip. I'm going to play this clip, you guys. And um, yeah, let's just uh, let's 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 just see her greatness. I, I, I just want to show her greatness. OK, OK. Welcome back to Later with Leon. I'm your host, Dustin Legend, Leon Rogers. And today I'm honored to have a good friend on the show. Her name is Alita Clark, but everybody calls her Inglewood Barbie. Hey, Inglewood Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. So I've known you for a while, and I've always been amazed at how you're out here in these streets and you're trying to do good, especially in the community that needs it, Inglewood. We talk, we hear about Inglewood on the news all the time, and when we hear about it, it's in a bad light. But they never seem to shine light on a lot of the people that do good in Inglewood. Uh, Fatal, yeah. good, good friend of mine who does well, and, and you yourself. Talk about Alita Clark, because I, I know Inglewood, Barbie, and I know Alita, but a lot of people don't know the story of Alita Clark and how you came to be this this proud black woman doing things in your neighborhood. Okay, it's like I don't know where to start. Um, well, I think that I'm good at what I do because of everything that I've been through. Mm -hmm. um, me, like a lot of other people in Chicago and just all over the world, I was not dealt a good hand. Um, I was a ward of the state. Um, when I was 18 months, my mother left me at a police station and she never came back. Um, from that point, I was in group homes, residentials, foster homes, where I experienced a lot of abuse and, um, you know, just feeling like nobody wanted me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, now that I'm a grown-up <laughs> and I have children, I just really want to be everything that I needed when I was growing up. So I use my organization, Hugs No Slugs, to just try to be that person, just to be that move, like, 
I can't, I'm not God, I'm not Junior Jesus, I'm just trying, like, I'm trying to implement love in all of these forgotten communities and, and just people that get looked over like the friends, you know, and everybody's like, well, you got a 501c3, why don't you just get grants? I am. Now, I wanted to pause it right there because some of you may not know why she said friends like the friends. She calls the homeless, her homeless, her friends. Now, that is something that I think is very important to say be, and, and to highlight. Why? Because she look at them as people, human beings. She said the friends. And you know what you say when you call somebody your friend. There's somebody you care about. They are considered your equal, right? She called the people that she helped feed who live on the streets friends. That's just to give you a glimpse of how beautiful her soul is. Let's continue with the video. That, you know, of course, I want to get grants. I don't know any grant writers, but I just actually got um, connected with one. But my organization represents the community working together. Like, when you hear Inglewood, you don't hear about good stuff. Like you said, no, you right. hear about people dying, kids dying, elders getting shot. Like, how you wait till you get 53 to get shot? Like, that's what's happening in our community, in our hood. And it's like, since I'm in the hood and I'm from the hood, and it's like, I can't move right now, you know? So it's like, I got to make where I'm at okay for me to be. And other people and other kids, like, I got to make it comfortable as much as I can. I love that she said that. Um, I talk about it all the time, how people complain about the hood, but nobody does anything in the hood. Everybody has the mentality to up and leave the hood, right? We're all familiar with the story of... of um, Nipsey Hussle, right? Now, when I mention Nipsey, everybody mentioned how he died right there in the same neighborhood that he was in. But here's the thing, and I have to highlight this. I have to highlight this. We have gotten to the point where we are afraid. Where we also just, we are not willing to die for what we believe in anymore. No one is truly willing to die for what they believe in. We have gotten comfortable. And I understand where she is coming you from. You guys not know what they're doing in Chicago? They're pushing a lot of you pe a lot of people out. Okay? And it's and it's it's hard for me to hear that people who are born and raised in Chicago have the ability to make some change, don't complain, move, and then say, look at those niggas over there. Well not Inglewood Barbie. She says something different. Let's get back into the video. When you, you talk about what, what you went through going up, and, and we just had Miss Miracle, uh, mm -hmm. Miracle uh, on the show from The Voice, and she went through some things. How did you overcome that? Like, you know, because going to foster homes and, and being in group homes and stuff like that, that can be very trying on a teenager, nonetheless, 18 months. Mm -hmm. how, how did you get through that? Like, what, what helped you get through that? Mm. I guess I'm still dealing with it, um, honestly. Uh, I, had some, I had some good people in my life as a kid that um, I actually still maintain a close relationship with, like my school counselor, Ron Strong. Like, he really helped me get through high school and helped me understand that things that was happening to me wasn't my fault. Right. Um, I had a staff in a group home named Adrian. I was really close with her, and she always, like, she never looked at me as a resident in a group home. She used to call me her sister, and she still do to this day. But it's like, every time I help somebody, it reminds me of where I used to be. So it makes me want to go, you know, even harder. So <laughs> She started so. to tear up. Um, I, I've, I've seen this video a couple of times, right, this interview, and I started to think about that, too. Like, it, there's so many people out there that have troubling past and they 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 be so so worried about themselves because of the trauma that they dealt with and and things of that sort and she stepped outside of herself and said look i know how it feels i'm still dealing with some of it so guess what i understand so i'm here to help you 
Let's get back into the video. Let's talk about some of the things you do in the hood. Of course, hugs, no slugs. Mm -hmm. you, we've talked numerous times about that, but you also feed the homeless. Um, uh, oh. Excuse me? The friends? Hugs, so hugs, no slugs. I said you always, you come and talk. We don't call them homeless, Leon. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> our friends. Yeah. You feed our friends. I don't want no smoke. Yeah, I got some, but um, you better not do that um, no more. Club 51. So yeah. talk about that and how long has that been going on? So I think we probably at like three years now. Um, or maybe it just seems that long because we do it for such a long period of time. Uh, everybody always like, oh, you're just such a great person. You be out there feeding them people, woo woo. But I didn't wake up one day like I'm gonna feed the homeless. Wow. I literally went to the police station to try to get my little brother out of jail, and I just saw all of these people sleep on the floor. And when I asked the police, like, y'all let them do this, they told me, yeah. I'm like, well, dang, like, can I come feed them? When they told me, yeah, it went from one day to seven months. Okay. That's that's dope right there, right? She said it went for one day to seven months. She went out there just doing something out of the goodness of her heart. And she said, you know what? How many of us go out there and just feed the homeless for one day? There's 365 days out of the year. I don't know one person who is only hungry for one day. She said, look, I'm going to continue to feed you. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So where can people, real quick, we got to get out of here, but where can people find you if they want to donate, if they want to help you out, if they want to come help feed our friends? Yes. Uh, um, on social media, I'm Inglewood Barbie on Instagram and on Facebook. I can't accept any more um, friend requests, but you can follow me, Alita Clark, and we always under the Vidoc on 51st, right before you get to Wentworth at 1030 every single night until April 20th. All right, man. There's something I wanted to mention, and I cannot, in no form or fashion, not mention this guy. While doing my research on Inglewood Barbie, I found out just in the midst of an untimely death that Virgil Abdo, Abdo, um, Ablo, yeah, Virgil Abdo. I want to make sure I say his name right. Virgil Abdo was helping and was a partner with Inglewood Barbie. She took the death pretty hard. Um, if you follow her, you saw. And he was in the trenches with her. He was born in Rockford, Illinois. That's about an hour outside of Chicago. And he took his time. And if you don't know who Virgil is, he was the, what was the, the artistic director for Louis, Louis Vuitton. So it's a big deal, <laughs> okay? And if you listen to Kanye, you know who he is, okay? All right. And to hear that, I didn't know anything about this man. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know anything about him. But to hear that throughout his busy schedule and throughout everything that he has going on with the platform and the notoriety that he has, he took out the time to help someone who was helping the less fortunate. I, I, I can't express enough how in, impactful and important that is. So for that, I have to make sure that I highlight him just like I'm highlighting her. So, but to close this out, um, to give her the justice that I believe she deserves, and because I feel in this moment she felt the love and she felt the presence of much appreciation, I'm going to end it with a clip from when she was on the Steve Harvey show and the words Steve had for her while on her show after having a conversation with her, what he pretty much summed up while talking to her. So I'm going to end it on that because I don't think I could say it much better than, than he did, okay? All right, you guys. Um, see you guys next time. Remember, I love you. And this platform is not just for me. It's for us. It's for the community. So go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all those beautiful things. Hit the notification bell so you can get more videos about how to uplift and better the community right here in the Chicago land. All right? I'm your girl, Sheree B. Chicago, and I'm out. I love you. I met a lot of people. I ain't never met nobody like you. I'm a gangster, Steve. I keep trying to tell you that. Yeah, but see. I'm a different kind of gangster. I'm a good gangster.
Oh, I'm looking. <laughs> you ain't got gangster road on you nowhere, but your spirit is real gangster. You know, um, see, most people who approach me about money, you know, they have foundations, and they have it all written out, what gets what, how much it costs. They, it's, it's, it's a plan. You know, it's how, they, it's how they attract money. I'm used to that. I'm used to that. I never met nobody say, I don't know what this costs. I'm going to just go do it. But then turn around and go do it. I never met nobody say, I'm finna open up a safe house. Then your girl go, what's a safe house? Then you don't, I don't know, but I'm gonna just open one. Cause it sound like a good thing. Hell, it's safe and it's a house. So I'm gonna open one. But then go open six of them. Do you own a house? No, I'm a renter. You get six safe houses, but you don't own a house. Who do that? This sister right here don't care nothing about her situation because she's so busy worrying about somebody else's situation. Who do that, man? That's crazy. You should stay in the same hood you've been in. You could have been out. You could have been out. Easy. You're a different kind of person. I have not met you yet. And I'm 64 years old and I done met everybody from all around the world. I done sat with President Obama. You different. You, you bad girl. You something special.